The PD-8, Russia's new 8-ton thrust two-spool turbofan engine developed by the United Engine Corporation, has progressed swiftly through its testing program during 2024 and 2025. In addition to routine performance and endurance assessments, one of the most critical aspects currently underway is the preparation for comprehensive cold weather and natural icing tests. Russian media has highlighted that these tests will involve a mix of ground-level simulations, environmental impact checks, water intake evaluations, and special flights in Arctic and subarctic regions, such as Arkhangelsk, where natural icing conditions are constantly present. A thorough understanding of this process requires an in-depth look at how Russian civil engines are validated under winter conditions, how anti-icing systems are tested, and how engineers ensure that the PD-8 can operate safely while exposed to freezing clouds, snow, sleet, and supercooled droplets. Civil certification requires engines to remain stable and safe under a wide range of atmospheric conditions, especially those involving supercooled water droplets and ice accumulation. Icing is a notable hazard because it can form deposits on inlets, rotors, fan blades, stators, or internal cavities. When these deposits break free and enter the engine, they can alter airflow, cause surges or stalls, create vibration spikes, or lead to a flameout. For the PD-8, icing validation is essential because the engine is expected to operate in Russia's northern regions, where low temperatures and long icing seasons are normal parts of daily aviation activity. The purpose of frost and cold weather testing goes far beyond simply monitoring the buildup of ice. Engineers must confirm that the PD-8's anti-ice systems are effective at preventing dangerous accumulations. They must verify that sensors, lubrication circuits, and fuel systems continue functioning after repeated freeze-thaw cycles. They must demonstrate that the compressor retains a safe surge margin even when airflow becomes distorted by ice or frozen moisture entering the inlet. They must also ensure that the engine can reliably start in extremely low temperatures and safely ingest and shed small quantities of ice without suffering damage or losing thrust. Every one of these factors is vital for commercial operations in areas where winter conditions dominate for much of the year. Before the PD-8 is flown into natural frost conditions, engineers conduct a detailed series of laboratory and ground-based evaluations. Russian engine development has traditionally followed a structured sequence of validation that begins with stand-based testing, proceeds to flights using a flying laboratory, and concludes with natural icing flights. The cold soak and thermal cycle stage places the engine through repeated freezing and thawing to evaluate its structural resilience. During these cycles, engineers closely observe how materials, seals, bearings, actuators, and sensors behave as they expand and contract. The goal is to detect brittleness, moisture infiltration, or any performance issues that could appear after long exposure to sub-zero temperatures. Cold soak testing also ensures that the PD-8 can reliably crank and start in extremely low temperatures, an essential requirement for aircraft parked at remote northern airfields without heated shelters. Water and ice ingestion testing forms another major portion of ground validation. Special equipment sprays water or slush into the engine to simulate rain, standing water, wet snow, and the early stages of icing. Engineers then analyze how the compressor responds to sudden ingestion of water or partially frozen material during takeoff or landing. They study drainage paths to ensure melted ice does not accumulate in harmful locations, and they observe whether blades or stators experience wear or aerodynamic disruption. These tests often lead to precise refinements in the inlet lip shape, spinner geometry, blade coatings, and bleed air passages that supply anti-icing heat. One of the most distinctive evaluations consists of the so-called pool tests, or runway water trials, often performed at facilities such as Zhukovsky. Engineers flood a large stretch of runway with water and drive the aircraft equipped with the PD-8 through it at controlled speeds. The purpose is to study spray ingestion, aerodynamic forces on the nacelle, fan blade behavior, and the performance of drainage systems 
when the engine encounters large volumes of water. Although pool tests do not perfectly replicate natural icing, the dynamics of heavy spray resemble slush, icy water, or wet snow, all of which are common on Russian runways throughout winter. Once the PD-8 meets ground test requirements, it transitions to flight trials aboard the L-76LL Flying Laboratory. This aircraft is a cornerstone of Russian propulsion development due to its large size, stable flight characteristics, and extensive instrumentation. It allows engineers to collect accurate data on airflow, vibration, temperature patterns, and icing behavior at a wide range of altitudes and weather conditions. During IL-76 LL flight testing, engineers evaluate how the PD-8 reacts to temperature drops during rapid climbs and to humidity during level flight. They measure the effectiveness of the anti-ice system when clouds contain supercooled droplets and monitor how the engine responds to throttle changes in frigid air. They also assess compressor stability as the aircraft passes through thin icing layers or light snowfall. These airborne evaluations are essential because they reveal aerodynamic behaviors that cannot be fully reproduced during ground tests, especially those that occur during real transitions through multiple atmospheric layers. After the PD-8 gathers enough flight hours on the IL-76LL, it is installed on the Superjet test aircraft. This phase concentrates on aircraft-specific integration rather than just the engine's standalone behavior. Engineers study how the nacelle and inlet accumulate ice in flight and whether airflow over the wing channels moisture toward the engine intake. They examine performance during approaches, go-arounds, and low-thrust icing encounters where inlet airflow can change quickly. The interaction between the aircraft's wing anti-icing system and the engine's anti-ice units is analyzed in detail to ensure they cooperate effectively in severe weather. Testing on the Superjet also reveals any aircraft-specific aerodynamic traits that could affect icing patterns, allowing engineers to make final refinements. One of the most important stages of PD-8 development is the natural icing program carried out in the Arkhangelsk region. This area is ideal for testing because it combines maritime humidity with cold northern temperatures, producing clouds rich in supercooled droplets, freezing precipitation, and mixed-phase icing for much of the year. Aircraft equipped with the PD-8 fly through these natural icing layers at controlled speeds, while engineers document ice accumulation on the inlet, spinner, and fan blades. Cameras and thermal sensors record ice growth patterns in real time. During these missions, engineers carefully observe how ice detaches from surfaces and enters the engine. When ice shedding occurs, sensors capture changes in thrust, compressor pressure ratios, vibration levels, and any signals of surge or stall behavior. Evaluating these events is essential because a properly designed engine must be able to ingest small quantities of ice without losing stability or suffering mechanical damage. The natural freezing stage also measures how the PD-8's anti-ice systems perform under various settings. Engineers test situations where anti-ice systems are switched off, operating automatically, or running at maximum heating. These tests determine the minimum safe configuration for flight. Low-altitude approach and go-around evaluations in icing confirm that rapid throttle movements do not cause compressor instability or distorted airflow. Because natural icing conditions are unpredictable, this stage provides the most realistic demonstration of how the engine behaves in real operations. Each natural icing flight produces a large quantity of data. Engineers analyze temperature readings, vibration logs, compressor maps, icing timestamps, and high-speed footage of the inlet. Based on this information, they may refine the engine control software, adjusting fuel flow, bleed air schedules, and anti-ice heating responses. They may also introduce hardware improvements, such as modifying rotor geometry or applying ice-resistant coatings. As data accumulates and is validated, engineers slowly expand the engine's certified ice envelope until it satisfies all regulatory requirements. 
Russia's aviation environment includes a wide range of climates, from coastal areas to Arctic regions where temperatures can fall below minus 40 degrees Celsius. The PD-8 will power aircraft that routinely fly to isolated northern communities, making strong cold weather performance essential. Reliable icing behavior affects airline costs, dispatch reliability, safety, and compliance with airworthiness rules. For Russia's broader goal of producing fully domestic civil aircraft, demonstrating that the PD-8 can withstand extreme winter conditions is a critical milestone for both certification and industry credibility. In conclusion, preparation of the PD-8 for freezing and icing conditions follows a structured, internationally accepted process. It begins with detailed laboratory and ground evaluations that confirm mechanical durability and thermal resilience. It then progresses to all 76 LL test flights that reveal real atmospheric behavior. Further testing on the Superjet verifies that the engine integrates correctly with the aircraft in icing conditions. The final stage consists of natural icing flights in Arctic regions such as Arkhangelsk, each stage generates data used to upgrade hardware and software until all certification targets are achieved. As Russia moves toward full domestic propulsion independence, these cold weather trials represent one of the final steps before the PD-8 enters mass production and widespread operational use. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us